Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we have an interview with aspiring attorney and founder of the Black Enneagram Deo, who is a type one. She talks about her experiences as a type one, as well as how we can make the Enneagram more inclusive and diverse. I hope you enjoy the interview. Hi! <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. good. Uh, do you want to start by just sort of uh, introducing yourself? Right, my name is Sayo. I am Nigerian American, so I was born in, born in Nigeria, but I moved here when I was about two. So I'm pretty much American. I know the culture a little bit, but I'm pretty much American. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm a recent graduate. I graduated from college in 2020. So praise God. I'm so excited about that. I'm done with that. Um, so I am the founder of the Black Enneagram. Um, and I kind of started the Black Enneagram because I felt like uh, a lot of the people who run the Enneagram, like on Instagram at least, are white women. Uh, or just white people in general. I know some of the, even the writers of most of like, the most popular books are white men. Um, but I've, I've been trying to read like a little bit of the history and I realized the history has nothing to do with white people. So I'm like, okay, this is clearly a thing. <laughs> this is clearly a thing that's open to like, it should be open to everyone. Mm. Um, and it should be available to everyone. And so I felt like a lot of black people don't even know what the them is. Um, and I, I'm like a beginner learner. So I was like, I can't really teach them, but I can like introduce it in a way that's fun and like relaxed. Um, so I decided to do that through the Indian, Black Indian page um, by typing TV shows, um, giving like super, super basic things. But the, the, the crux of what I'm trying to do is like have like black imagery. So like I use black women. Um, I take I take little like images from like Pinterest and I, I, I draw over them. Um, and so I just kind of use black images and say like, OK, the Instagram is for everyone. Everyone can benefit from this. And so, yeah, I think that a lot of black people are very like zodiac focused. They focus on the zodiac signs and like, oh, I'm a Libra. I'm a th but that, I feel like that's not his scientifically or like even like, it's not as helpful as the Indian game is. And so I kind of want to bring people who are in that space into the Indian game space. Um, so yeah, apart from that, I am an aspiring attorney. So I really want to be a lawyer. Um, I, uh, so I'm going to be applying in 2020, 2021. Um, so I'm just like in the process of doing that now. So yeah, I'm busy be doing a lot right now, but yeah. Yeah, that's great. And definitely on what it's interesting what you're saying about accessibility and stuff, like I definitely feel you there of like, it's kind of, it can be fun and interesting, but then like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever like, I would have ever used astrology in the way that you use the right. Because right, right, exactly. So how did you first sort of come across the Enneagram and how did you learn? I love this question. Okay, so, I was, so I, have, I had a friend who was uh, walking with me through life. And so I'm a Christian, so we call it doing life together. Um, so I was doing life with her and she like started to notice some things in me that were just like crazy. Like I was just, <clears throat> like my oneness was showing to her. Uh, my perfectionism, <laughs> my perfectionism was showing. Um, my, my, rigid, my rigidity, you know what I mean? All of my, like my, the, the bad sides of a one were like coming up because I was in a very stressful situation, mm -hmm. um, very stressful relationship. Um, so she was like, she brought up the Enneagram to me. Um, and I think that when I first used, when I first found about it, found out about it, um, I used it the way that people use Zodiac signs. Um, but then as I've grown to understand like exactly what it is, like it's supposed to be deeply transformative. Um, I think I've, you know, tried to adopt it in a way that like actually produces growth in my life. Um, so yeah, it came from a friend uh, who really wanted just to see me, just who wanted to just see me grow um, and be, you know, more like Christ in, in, a, in a good way. Um, and take and, cut, and bring me out of that bad situation that I was in because it was really really bad so yeah 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 and I think that's I think we've all I think most people when they start with the Enneagram kind of right see it in that kind of astrology or like right, right. I mean any other personality type kind of yeah way of like oh okay this is fun move on right right I think it's great how transformative it can be right right I think I realized that starting the page, I think if I didn't start the page, I would have continued using it as a zodiac sign, but actually starting the page and, and meeting people who are actually using it and actually like letting it do the work in them. I'm just like, yeah, I, I have to slow down and make sure I know what I'm talking about before I mess up other people's lives. So <laughs> it's been, it's been a journey. I'm glad I started it because yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I definitely feel you on that with like creating an Instagram page and then kind of going, well, yeah, I really need to like, right. make sure, like <laughs> know what I'm saying before yeah. I'm posting all this stuff. I don't really know. Right. How do you see uh, your type oneness kind of affect your life? Yeah. 
I think in relationships I've seen that I'm a very uh, rigid person and I'm not like I'm not a very spontaneous person so I, I'm one example of a way that my personality has shown up in like a, in situations like I don't do last minute plans um, so if you say oh let's go to the movies tonight you have to have told me a week or two before <laughs> before God, I will say no even if I'm doing nothing that entire day and I'm free I will not go because I did not plan to go so that's just like a way that in my relationships it shows up I think in my work um, my type one that shows up a lot because I want to do everything really well and I want to be good. And so when I don't do something well at work, I beat myself up about it a lot. And I even like last week I contemplated like quitting because I was just doing such a poor, I felt like I was doing a poor job. He probably wouldn't, my boss probably wouldn't say that, but I felt like I was doing a poor job. So that inner critic is like always, 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 always berating me and telling me, okay, you did that wrong and keep doing that wrong. You know what I mean? So it shows up in my work in that I'm really, really hard on myself. Um, and I don't allow myself to just say, okay, you did that, you did that, the, you did that the best that you can. Uh, I don't believe in that. I don't know. If, I mean, I'm trying to learn and believe in that, but yeah. <laughs> that isn't my natural bent. My natural bent is like, okay, that was good enough. Um, so yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a couple ways that it shows up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And then how do you relate to your wings? So it's one wing nine or one wing two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I feel more connected to the one wing two. Cause I'm not conflict avoidant at all. Like I, I am, I embrace conflict. I welcome it. And that's probably what gets me a lot, in a lot of trouble <laughs> because I'm just like, we're gonna talk about this. They're not gonna leave me to stress about this. We're gonna have a conversation. Um, and so my one wing two ness gives me the uh, ability to be very like, what's the word? Intentional with people. And so I'm very intentional about my friendships. Very intentional about where I spend my time um, and the, the people I have around me. I'm very, very intentional. And so that means a lot of times. I'm like readjusting my friendship circles a lot and that's not always healthy, but I'm always very intentional about like, what do I bring, what am I bringing in? So my two is like helping me to serve those people, but I want to serve people that I, you know, intentionally have chosen to serve. Um, so my two-ness makes me more of a helper. And then I don't think I use my nine wing as much. Um, I think when I'm in stress, I do go into like lazy mode or sloth mode. Um, I just want to watch TV and sleep all day. That's, that's the only way, only time I ever use it was when, I, was when I'm in that like bad space. I'm just like, okay, I need to stop and not do and just be for a minute. So I think that's how I use my nine wing. Yeah. 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 I get that. Yeah. Mm. I definitely like use my three wing way more than I use my Right. Wing. Right. So how do you relate to your lines of inspiration? So uh, mm. that's seven and four, is it? Yes. Yeah, seven is, yeah. Seven and four. Yeah. I think we go to seven in health and four in stress. I think that's what it is. So I think, let's talk, I'll talk about the stress first. So when I go to four in stress, I think last week has been a good example of me going into four. Um, with everything that's going on, with all the race issues that are going on, um, I've been feeling the weight of that, like a lot on my shoulders. And so my immediate response has been, let's just stop and listen to like sad music and embrace the sadness um, and feel all the emotions and allow myself to feel. Cause I don't, and, I, and it's great that I'm at home I'm not around friends because I think that I'm more comfortable at being at home and expressing my feelings with my family. Um, so I'm able to like cry and be sad and you know what I mean? So I'm lucky that I'm at home that I get to experience that. But I think my foreignness just gives me the permission to feel. I think my one does not allow me to, doesn't allow me to feel bad emotions, doesn't allow me to feel sadness or anger, frustration. I My, my four just says feel it um, and then, you know, move on for it. And that's, that's something I've really been appreciative about with like, integrating the Enneagram and like the gospel is like the gospel like for me at least when I when I tell myself I can't feel it's like I'm saying like my feelings don't matter but I think one thing that I've learned in this season is like you no know, God wants you to feel like he's giving you your emotions for a reason so use them so my foreignness reminds me like you no know, he's giving you your emotions for a reason use them embrace them like take them to him um and so that's been amazing integrating the gospel in the Enneagram for me <clears throat> then my seven when I was graduating my seven was coming out a lot because I was very excited, very happy, very spontaneous. I wanted to just do everything. Um, so when I'm in a really good mood and, I'm in a, and things around me are working out and everything is like, I have all the plans together and everything just looks great. My seven starts to come out and I'm a lot more fun <laughs> to be around. Um, I like listening to more hype music. I'm not, like I have like playlists for everything. That's where my four comes in. I have playlists for my sadness, for my happiness. It's a lot. <laughs> It's a lot, but I, I think my, 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 my seven comes out when everything around me looks good. When everything around me is, I feel it's perfect, um, then I can rest and I can enjoy life for yeah. what it is. Uh, so yeah, that's how, it, that's how it works for me. I don't know if that works for all ones, but yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. And it sounds mm-hmm. yeah, like you see where you connect with those types. Right, of right. As we're both sort of attempting to be like create Instagrams. Right. Um, how do you think, especially as people who are kind of trying to create Instagrams, mm-hmm. um, we can kind of work <coughs> the Enneagram more conclu- inclusive? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I think that having conversations, like actual conversations with people of color, I think one thing I've noticed, like now that people are being more aware of the fact that they're not as inclusive, now they're like adding yes, black faces into their art, but they're not, and it's like the, the actual content doesn't show that they're having conversations with black people. So yeah, you're adding these, these caricatures and like you're adding, you know, black people, but are you actually in the back of your, like in the background having conversations with black people and seeing how their culture and how their blackness shows up in the Enneagram? I think that's for me is the biggest thing. Like you can have all these great diverse like skin colors and faces on your thing, but at the end of the day, like the fact that you only talk to white people is gonna show through your content. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think having conversations with them, um, seeing the ways that we differ because of our cultural backgrounds would be cool. Um, Cause I know that for, for me talking to, I'm sorry, I just put the outside. <laughs> for me, talking to black women, especially during this time, I can just see their their types show up so differently than the way that Instagram has portrayed their types showing up. And it's like, well, yeah, but like right now we're going through something, so it's gonna show up a little differently than normal. Um, so yeah, I think having conversations with them and being open to um, adding diverse opinions and diverse like like backgrounds and like experiences that's where I for. diverse experiences into your page would be great i think that a lot of people are, are have done a great job of that and there might be like a couple of them just like oh you're just adding black faces you're not really mm-hmm. but i think most people are really trying most people have been doing this from the start so yeah i'm appreciative of, of the community that, that does enneagram things on instagram because they really are trying so i recognize that so off kind of off of that um mm-hmm. is there, are there things about uh, especially the type one, but I mean any of the types that you've noticed um, mm, as, that are different. as a black woman, like right. uh, aren't, that are sort of expressed in a way that you don't connect with because of your culture. Yes, for sure. <laughs> so uh, this, this is like a very small example and it may seem like minute or like insignificant, but it, it meant a lot to me. So yeah. on one of the pages that I saw, she talked about how like ones, are t- like they, once people are loading the dishwasher, like they'll be, they'll come back and like fix it. And in in my culture, in black culture, maybe I, maybe some black people do this, but I have never once touched my dishwasher. <laughs> like never once used it. And I'm just like, no, I would never, I would never, cause we don't use it. So it's like that culture, it's a very small thing, but it's a cultural difference in the way that we show up. Um, and it made me just feel like, oh, okay, this is for white people. Like this wasn't for, and I'm sure there are black people who use the dishwasher, but for me personally, and most black people don't necessarily, you just, that was in a small way that I felt like kind of left out. And then another way, I, I'm kind of a bigger way is like when people type TV shows, um, they never type black TV shows. It's always Friends, it's always The Office, it's always white shows, white dominant shows. And so I was like, no, I'm going to dedicate my page to typing almost every single TV show I could think of. Because if I, when I was looking for it, I was typing in, when I, when I was just like using it as a Zodiac, like the way people use Zodiac, I was typing in like, oh, what? All, what um, this is a show called A Different World. I was looking for what's, what what character on A Different World am I like? And I couldn't, no one was talking about it. I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess this isn't for me. It just made me feel super, super left out. Um, so it's more on like the small, minute things. I think on the big grand level, I understand like the core of our personalities are very similar. Um, and that we may show up differently depending on our cultural background, but um, just the small fun things, it's like, I can't, I can't experience that because you don't get, you know my culture and you don't get where i'm coming from which is fine because you're like you know if you're a white person you're not unless you unless you unless you intentionally expose yourself to black culture you're probably not gonna understand it um, unless you have like black friends who talk talk to you about it um so i get it i understand it but i felt left out and i, I knew other people felt the same way so i was like let me just let me just be a leader the leader that i am and start this yeah no that definitely makes sense and i definitely feel you on like there's not enough uh, like there's so many people who are typing TV shows yeah and, like just so few of them do something other than like you're saying like right. friends, the office like all those kinds of things right it was especially like I noticed when I uh, I've only done two typing of TV shows mm-hmm. um, on my page and when I did went to do never have I ever 
but at the Mindy Kaling show that uh, oh, I've never heard of that. Um, it came out like earlier this year. Um, mm-hmm. by Mindy Kaling, like half the cast are like uh, Asian. Um, like, oh wow! Um, and like mm-hmm. there's like one main character who's white. Um, oh, wow. And they're not even that main of a character, um, and the rest of the cast are all like either mixed race or black or Asian or South Asian. Um, and I went to type that show, and like normally there's like some random Reddit threads or something of mm-hmm. like most TV shows of like uh, saying, oh well, I think this person's this type and this person's this type, and I always kind of check them to kind of see what other people yeah. are doing to be yeah. like. Oh yeah, I think I, I have typed them right, but let me just double check. And I just couldn't find anything about Never Have I Ever. Um, <laughs> and I imagine that's probably the case with, unfortunately, a lot of sure. my bad shows. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I appreciate from your page and also hope that in my page I can create some more diverse content. And when yeah. TV shows think about like, well, how many other people have typed this TV show and right, like right. is the TV show just full of white people? Um, right. Because that's right. because those are the shows that get typed more regularly. And right. yeah, I think as creators we can make our we can make our platforms wherever we want them to be. Right. So right. why not make them more diverse? Right, right. I definitely agree. I think that I like that point you made about like looking it up to see what other people are saying. I didn't have that I didn't, same, I don't have that privilege of saying, oh, okay, let's see what other people are having a conversation about. I have to do all of this off of like my intuition, mm-hmm. um, and which I feel like I have good intuition, but I mean, sometimes I'm wrong. And then my inner critic is like, oh, you, did it. you know what I mean? It's just a cycle. <laughs> it's just a cycle. So I think that, yeah, not having that sounding board off of Reddit makes it a little bit more hard because like you, you want to get it right. Mm-hmm. And you just can't because you don't have the support that you need when it comes to like mainstream, you know, uh, forums like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I definitely get you there. Oh, this is the this is my fun question of um, <laughs> which fictional character do you relate to the most? I relate to. So I talked about a different world, right? A different world is basically a show about these college kids, black college kids at HBCU. HBCU is a historically black college or university. One of the characters on that show, her name is Whitley, mm-hmm. and she's amazing. She's very like posh, very proper, very put together. Like she's a perfectionist. She's the quintessential one. Mm-hmm. Very very one. Um, and she's just perfect to me. I, I wish I could be like her. So, yeah, she's very beautiful, gorgeous. Yeah, I just, I think there are so many examples of like really great black ones that people don't showcase. I think even the way that people type black moms on TV shows is really weird because they type them either as twos or nines, but they're never like eights or ones. And they're never powerful. They're always like, oh, let me serve, let me serve. And which is great. I love serving, but. I think what moms can be moms can be can be ones and eights as well. So yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because I would say that a lot of um, at least a lot of like uh, TV shows that have uh, white moms in them, mm-hmm. te- I think tend to be more ones and more like three. That's so true. Um, yes. It's like I'm rewatching Modern Family at the moment, and like oh, I love that show. Claire is probably <laughs> like a three. And yeah, like, Gloria is probably like an eight or something. Like, yes, um, that's facts. Yeah, and it's interesting that you noted that you've noticed that like yeah. black TV shows that they don't kind of. Do you think yeah. that they're not allowed to be? They're not sort of allowed to be seen as ones or eights or stuff. Because okay, it's because of the stereotype of like the angry black woman. I think the TV shows are trying to take to go away from that and like make black women more softer. And I get that, I understand that, but like. And that you you can be you can be a strong woman, and I think that people are trying to move away from this like strong black woman narrative as well, which I think is amazing. It's super exhausting to be called a, a strong black woman all the time. I completely agree, but I think that there are black women who are apes and who are very strong, who have like who, who revel and they love their strength. Um, then there are one, there are black women who are ones like myself, who people I feel like people in my like circles have seen me, or I feel like they see me as oh you're you're kind of a lot because. That people are taught that black women shouldn't be strong anymore. Like they shouldn't be the ones who are in charge. But I like being in charge. I don't. I want to be in charge. 
So, I mean, there's there's two sides to it. The side of like, okay, yeah, we should stop calling black women strong because it's kind of problematic. But then let black women be strong when they want to be and don't call them black, angry black women, black, angry black women when they are. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, that, I think that people are trying to go away from that like stereotype of like, oh, she's sassy, oh, she has an attitude, oh, she's angry, which I appreciate, I love. But I wish that there was a mom on TV that I was just like, oh, me and you were here. And I think that the only mom that I can really relate to is Rainbow from Blackish. Like, she is on fire like she's an amazing one and she's like super uh strong and i'm unapologetic she says what she wants to say like she's not a pushover at all um and so i love that i think that we need more ones like rainbow on tv yeah i i i definitely agree <laughs> <laughs> uh is there anything else that like you want to say about ones or about the enneagram or anything about anything that you kind of want to like express that uh, I haven't asked you about. I think honestly I have to say this I really appreciate you reaching out to me this is really, really oh. great when I started this page I did not think anyone was gonna care <laughs> and it's been interesting to see how many white people follow me like I didn't expect white people to follow me at all that was super shocking for me and I really wanted to just ask people like why are you here I guess is it for <laughs> This isn't for you but cool like it's great that you're here I love it but I just and most people who interact with me all the black people so I, I can see that yeah they're following me but they may not be I mean some of them are but most of them most people who are interactive are black people um so I think that's it's just interesting when I see black when I see white people be open to hearing black people's voices I'm just so I'm not I'm used to people being like ah they'll they'll figure it out let them have their own space we don't need to like infiltrate and try to bring them into our space um and so that's been really encouraging to see this happening i mean I, this has been I, someone has asked me this again i'm like okay y'all are y'all are really trying like y'all are really making an effort and that that means the world like just to see that y'all care means the world um so yeah i think that's all i want to say i don't think i have anything else unless you have more questions but yeah uh no i don't think i do um but yeah i think the fact that uh your page is doing really well i think yeah um, exemplifies the fact that there are a lot of people who are interested yeah. in Instagram who right. aren't white, who right. want content that isn't just focused on white. Yeah, um, right, right, right. Yeah, like I've said, I really appreciate your page. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I hope that I can make my page more diverse. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for taking no your day and chatting to me. No problem, no problem, this is great. Um, and have a fun rest of your day. <laughs> you Thank you. Bye. Later. Bye. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the interview. If you want to see more from me, you can follow me on Flynn Davies Enneagram. And if you want to see more from Deo, you can follow her at the Black Enneagram on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel for more Enneagram content. I've also done interviews with all the other Enneagram types except type 2 and 9. Um, which are hopefully coming your way soon. Um, but if you want to check them out, there's a playlist uh, linked down below. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.